welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about convicts. Um, we're talking about specifically convicts who were transported to Australia and what crimes that they committed. So the justice system in England was pretty harsh back then and the sorts of crimes that people got transported for seem really minor these days. Some of them are even kind of strange. So I thought that I would just have a look at the different crimes um, that warranted different punishments back then. Particularly I'm going to be looking at what warranted a death sentence and what warranted transportation. I'm going to be using the list that was put together by Patrick Colquhoun? Don't you just love YouTube? Cahoon or Cahoon? Cahoon. Patrick Cahoon or Cahoon. Patrick Cahoon. Anyway, I'll write it so that you can actually see it. But he put together the summary of capital and transportable offences 1796. So we can see what sorts of things that people maybe came out here for doing or what actually warranted people being executed in England at the time. So I'm just going to kind of go through the list and maybe chat about some of them. Yeah, we'll just see how we go. <laughs> All right, first are the crimes that are punishable by the deprivation of life and where upon conviction of the offenders, the sentence of death must be pronounced by the judge. Okay, so that really means that if somebody has been found guilty of one of these crimes, the judge actually has no choice but to give them a death sentence. So the first one is treason, including counterfeiting and petty treason. I mean, this is, goes without saying, I guess treason is a pretty bad one. So I'm kind of not surprised that it was up there in the harshest penalties. Um, the second one is murder. Once again, even these days, we consider murder to probably be one of the worst crimes. So, yep. Arson or willfully malicious... Oh, sorry. Arson or willfully and maliciously burning a house, barns with corn, etc. Alright, arson. So, these days, obviously, arson is still pretty serious, but, I mean, we wouldn't consider it to be um, worth taking somebody's life over. But... I mean, when you're talking about um, burning barns with corn and stuff, I mean, the food supplies, especially back then, would have been pretty, um, like, they relied on that stuff. It's not like you could have just, you know, gone to the store and bought some canned stuff. So it would have been a pretty bad act, I guess, to take out the food supply. <laughs> okay, rape or the forcible violation of chastity, etc. Um... Of course, this is another harsh one, but I think a lot of people would be surprised that this is on the death um, sentence list because I think a lot of people these days think that, you know, back in the past, you know, it wasn't particularly taken seriously or something like that, but obviously it was. It was a death penalty to be found guilty of rape. Okay, the next one is one of my favorites. Stealing an heiress. <laughs> it just sounds so random, like... It's like, is that kidnapping? Like, I think it is kidnapping, but the way they phrase it, like, stealing an heiress, like, like she's a person, but you just stole her. It's, I don't know. That one always makes me laugh. <laughs> but yeah, once again, a death penalty. Okay, sodomy, a crime against nature. Um, obviously, back then, it was sort of a more, like, moral police kind of issue. Um, and people think that, you know, oh no, it was a death sentence, so... If you're looking at the crime of sodomy, I don't think anyone was ever actually executed for this one. Um, it recently kind of came back up again in the press, I think, and it was sort of shot down again. It's one of those ones where, like we said, you have to, the judge had to sentence them to death if someone was found guilty, but the appeals process was huge over there. So let's say someone was found guilty of sodomy and they got the death sentence, they almost always appealed and I believe they always got off. I don't think in England anyone was actually sentenced to death for that one. Piracy or robbing ships and vessels at sea. Yup. <laughs> well, we all love pirate stories, but of course that was a pretty bad no-no, so death to pirates. Forgery of deeds, bonds, bills, notes, public securities, etc. Once again, I guess a pretty serious crime. Destroying ships or setting them on fire. <laughs> I 
Similar to the arson one, I guess. Bankrupts not surrendering or concealing their effects. So I guess that's when somebody goes bankrupt and they um, maybe hide some of their... Um, so they declare bankruptcy but hide some of their actual assets or money. Burglary or housebreaking in the night time. Well, that's pretty straightforward. But I mean, once again, this is pretty harsh these days. Somebody breaking and entering, whether it's day or night, um, wouldn't warrant a death sentence, but they were a pretty harsh system back then. So next one, highway robbery, and then housebreaking in the daytime. So I don't know why they're actually sort of separated. They're both death penalties, housebreaking in the day, housebreaking in the night, and highway robbery, obviously, stealing off somebody when it's not their house. <laughs> Privately stealing or picking pockets above one shilling. So obviously you can pick a pocket uh, a little bit less than that, but one shilling is kind of the max. I mean, that's like, to be executed for that though, it seems pretty drastic. Shoplifting above five shillings. So if you want like between one and five shillings, you probably want to shoplift, but not above five shillings because then... Yeah, that's death penalty. Stealing bonds, bills or banknotes. Stealing banknotes or bills from letters. You know, I'm just going to rattle through some of these. I don't think I'll comment on all of them. They're, they're interesting though. Stealing above 40 shillings in any house or stealing above 40 shillings on a river. Mm-hmm. Like remembering back then that they had a lot of stuff happening on the river, like um, trade, uh, what do you call it, like um, people were moving goods in and out um, through the river system, so obviously it was open to theft. Actually one of my ancestors was done for that, stealing off a, um, a vessel on the Thames. Is that how it said? Thames? Thames. <sighs> Sorry England. Thames. All right, according to this, it says Thames. So, yeah, that was what my ancestor did. And obviously the reason I don't know how to pronounce that name of the river is because I've never been there because I'm exiled in Sydney where my ancestor was put. <laughs> All right, um, stealing linen, etc., from bleaching grounds, etc., or destroying linen therein. So. We couldn't imagine getting a death penalty now for stealing linens, but um, from bleaching grounds, I guess that was when they were, that was how they were cleaning the sheets and then tablecloths and whatever their linens were. And yeah, I guess it was pretty naughty, but I mean, still seemed pretty harsh <laughs> to die for that. Maiming or killing cattle maliciously. I mean, honestly, that's fair enough. I feel like maliciously you shouldn't be doing that. That's cruelty to animals and I'm all cool for a death penalty to somebody who's cruel to animals. Stealing horses, cattle or sheep. Yep. Shooting at a revenue officer or at any other person. <laughs> so shooting at anyone's not okay, but particularly a revenue officer. Um, pulling down houses and churches, etc. Presumably that's like without permission. Breaking down the head of a fish pond whereby fish may be lost. Cutting down trees in an avenue, garden, etc. <laughs> I mean, once again, you shouldn't do that, like, but the death penalty seems harsh. Like, cutting down trees in an avenue, garden, etc. Like, I'm just thinking like if somebody went like down the street in Sydney and cut down one of the trees, like, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that and you'll definitely get in trouble. But the death penalty, wow, like that seems harsh. Maybe it was like because people were cold and they wanted firewood and stuff. So they had to actually like be harsh about the laws about it. Otherwise, maybe everyone would be doing it. I don't know. Um, cutting down river or sea banks. Cutting hop vines, setting fire to coal mines, like 
setting fire to coal mines that sounds like some crazy shit. who would want to do that that sounds like just like what an insane person would do right setting fire to coal mines then again like i feel like some protesters these days might try to do stuff like that but it seems super dangerous right <laughs> Taking a reward for helping another to stolen goods in certain cases. Taking a reward for helping another to stolen goods. So I guess, you know, what if you help them to stolen goods but you don't take a reward? Like, you're like, hey, there's some stolen goods down there, you know, you can get them, but you don't take a reward. Is that okay? Or, hmm. Um, returning from transportation or being at large in the kingdom after sentence. So obviously if you've been transported out to Australia and you've somehow managed to find your way back, that's obviously a death penalty. Stabbing a person unarmed or not having a weapon drawn if he die in six months. <laughs> this is a good one too, right? Stabbing a person unarmed or not having a weapon drawn. So for starters, you can stab people if they're holding a weapon. And if you die in six months. So if you stab that person and they die within six months, then you'll get executed. But if it's after six months, then you're cool. <laughs> Maybe they decided that six months was about the period of a stabbing wound to heal. I don't know. <laughs> But just the idea, like, it sounds so Wild West, the idea that, like, if someone's standing there with a weapon, you can totally stab them. Like, that's allowed. But, um, if they don't have a weapon drawn, then you're going to be executed because then you're just, like, stabbing people for no reason. <laughs> concealing the death of a bastard child. Like, you think concealing the death of anyone or, like, any child or any person would be the same, but... Maybe concealing the death of a bastard child, maybe that happened like frequently, like people not wanting to, not wanting to admit that they had the bastard child or something and maybe covering up its death. That's like, that's sad. Maliciously maiming or disfiguring any person, etc., lying in wait for the purpose. Next one, sending threatening letters. <laughs> um... Like, it sounds kind of funny. And like, okay, nobody wants to get threatening letters, but death penalty is pretty harsh. Like, I think a lot of these um, are actually sort of just more geared toward protecting the richer classes. Like, I mean, threatening letters, like presumably they're afraid about their reputation or something. Like, what does a poor person care? A lot of them probably couldn't read anyway. So what's a threatening letter to someone who can't read? Riots by 12 or more and not dispersing in an hour after proclamation. So you're allowed to riot, but you can only have like 11 people or less in your riot. <laughs> That's once again like a rich person protection thing, right? I guess they don't want hordes of poor people like rioting because like I don't know that there'd be circumstances where you'd have rich riots. <laughs> All right, being accessories to felonies deemed capital. That speaks for itself. Stealing woolen cloth from tenter grounds. Stealing from a ship in distress. That is low. Okay, who's doing that? The ship is in distress. It's sinking. You come aboard to help them and you steal from them. Like, also stealing from government stores, embezzling burning or destroying in dockyards in certain cases. I mean, government stores, like, <laughs> I get it. The government wanted to protect its stuff. <laughs> Challenging jurors above 20 in capital felonies or standing mute. Cottons selling with forged stamps. Deer stealing, second offense, or even first offense under black act, not usually enforced. Uttering counterfeit money, third offence. Prisoners under insolvent acts, guilty of perjury. Destroying silk or velvet in the loom or the tools for manufacturing thereof. Or destroying woolen goods, racks or tools or entering a house for that purpose. 
So they took their like weaving and stuff obviously quite seriously um, that you would die if you destroyed any of that stuff or even if you n intended to. Um, I think it just really came down to like resources back then and property crimes seem to be huge on this list like they took that stuff really seriously like a handful of these are crimes against people the ones like stabbing and stuff like that but not so many of them seem to be more like crimes against property um like next one servants purloining their master's goods value 40 shillings personating bail or acknowledging fines or judgments in another's name escape by breaking prison in certain cases attempting to kill privy councillors etc <laughs> sacrilege see sacrilege that's a big one as well like i can't imagine these days it being like that and i certainly don't want it to be like that again <laughs> But um, yeah, that's a very harsh one to get a death penalty for. Well, that's what I think now, but obviously back then it was a different world. <laughs> Smuggling by persons armed or assembling armed for that purpose. Robbery of the mail. <laughs> yeah, that's a shitty thing to do. Don't steal mail. Like. I think the people at the Chalora Sorting Center could learn from this one. Like, has anyone else had packages go missing there? Because whenever I order things and it goes through Chalora, I feel like a good, like, I don't know, one in, one in 15 or one in 20 things that I've had go through that sorting center have disappeared. And if robbery of the mail were still a capital crime, they wouldn't be doing it. So... People at the Chalora Sorting Centre, you're just lucky that you didn't live back then in England. Destroying turnpikes or bridges, gates, weighing engines, locks, sluices, engines for draining marshes, etc. They took their property crimes seriously. <laughs> Mutiny, desertion, etc. by the martial and statute law. Yes. They took mutiny pretty seriously too. I mean, mutiny is pretty close to treason though. All right, the last one is soldiers or sailors enlisting into foreign service. So I guess that's also similar to treason, right? Like, yeah. All right, so all of the ones that I just talked about were capital crimes. So they warranted a death sentence. Whether or not their death sentence was always actually follow it through with isn't you know as straightforward like a lot of people did appeal and a lot of people did have their sentences either completely gotten rid of or downgraded a lot of them were actually downgraded to transportation 